Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, it has been a fascinating weekend, of course, because we actually managed to see some football. And, uh, and on that, I wanted to start with, because I wanted to give you my impressions of uh, that first weekend in the Bundesliga. Let's not forget, and this is important for the bigger picture, that uh, Bundesliga will play only one game a week which means that they will have a lot of time to recover. It won't happen in Italy, it won't happen in England, it won't happen in Spain, which changes things dramatically, really. Having spoken to La Liga managers, they realise that um, they are at a disadvantage having to do uh, a game every three days, which um, means that they cannot learn so much from the Bundesliga. Some of it, yes, the protocol. The fact that there were eight injuries uh, in the first six games, and I think two or three as well on Sunday, means that uh, it is to be expected. Um, there is a report uh, that can be applied from what has happened this weekend into La Liga, into the Premier League, into Serie A. Uh, there's a report that was done when the, um, uh, I think it was the, uh, the MLS for four months and a half were no uh, games because of a dispute. Um, and as a consequence, when they came back, rushing the players a little bit perhaps, even though there were time to prepare them, um, but they didn't know the length of it, or perhaps uh, they hadn't calculated uh, what it meant to have four and a half months of not proper training. Uh, what, what happened was the, uh, there were serious Achilles tendon injuries, 12 of them, in the first two weeks. Uh, and that was a regular, an, uh, an average of five per season, the previous six seasons. So cruciates could be a, a, a real danger, and, uh, and generally, the managers in Spain realize that the work that they've done uh, all these months for prevention of injuries doesn't count for anything right now. So yes, injuries we saw in the Bundesliga. We also saw a lack of rhythm, normal, and some players out of form, expected. But um, what happens when you are unable to produce the kind of rhythm that uh, makes your team play in the way that you want is that it ends up being uh, less about the team, less about the collective, more about the quality, the individual quality. That's perhaps what we're going to see. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be able to put the kind of rhythm that makes teams that we adore and like watching uh, able to do what they do. From Bayern Munich to Borussia Dortmund, then you jump to Manchester City, Liverpool, uh, I don't know, Sevilla, even Getafe. They all have a way of playing that has to do with a with a high tempo and constant tempo, but they won't be able to do that. Especially, as, uh, as I say, because having had three games per, sorry, two games per week, means that they're going to have to make five or six changes per, per, per game. So it, it is completely new. Um, I think it was the Hertha Berlin manager that said that it's like um, uh, piloting a plane with your eyes closed. They don't know where they're going because it's a completely new situation to them. But you could see all those things. Um, the lack of fans, uh, which is necessary, of course, uh, means that um, the individual pretty moves don't get appreciated so much. And uh, the fans have got a lot of influence in what happens in the game for, from the moment that when you concede a goal and what happens straight after, when you score a goal and what happens straight after, the minutes before a game, as I say, the, um, looking for those pretty moves that players enjoy, the, um, the gratification of getting fans um, uh, you know, clapping them and, 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 and enjoying them, all that is gone. Uh, but uh, we have to accept what it is. And, uh, and I think we're all in agreement that uh, as an industry, football had to come back. Um, I know that there is a lot of concerns about the health of the players, but we said here before the ones that will be on the pitch will be the healthiest people in the world because they would have passed so many tests. Uh, and there was, in the case of Germany, one week before they start, uh, there was a, uh, they met uh, and isolated in a hotel for a week. I think that's what La Liga would like to do. The Premier League hasn't discussed that properly yet, but they'll have to. And, uh, and the same with Serie A. They even suggested in Serie A to do it for the whole of the tournament or what's left of the tournament. Anyway, some of it has to happen. But then... Uh, the players in Spain don't want to do that for the whole month and a half of games. So there are risks, but they will keep being tested. And uh, if you uh, follow the procedures of social distancing and, uh, and cleaning your hands, etc., uh, plus the tests, uh, everybody uh, admits that it shouldn't be any 
uh, infections during training or during games. We will see. In any case, it was um, it was a joy to see a ball moving, and it was a joy to see some of the players. But it is in we entering a completely different world, one that uh, we're not used to, and uh, and we will have to get used to because this is going to go on for a long while. Anyway, let's go into the questions I've got here from Frank Constancio. What is the next destination of Mauricio Pochettino and his staff? Starting with that, that's too strong a start. Should we leave it for a little bit later? We'll come back to this one. Um, right. What are your thoughts on Griezmann in a player swap deal with Neymar? The problem, uh, um, let's see, Barcelona, yes, will be happy to get a, a deal uh, for Neymar. That means swapping players. Uh, and Barcelona would like Dembélé to be part of that deal. Uh, but PSG right now are showing no interest in Griezmann and no interest in Dembélé. Plus, uh, to do this kind of swap deals in which you have to have a relationship, a proper relationship with the club that you're doing that with, has to be a good relationship. So Barcelona has got a good relationship with Inter, with Juventus, with perhaps Manchester City, not so much with PSG. So Barcelona uh, have got the, the uh, possibility of getting Neymar in pause. They reckon that let's see if there is an opportunity to do so later, perhaps uh, just before the, the end of the transfer window or something like that, because right now it's not possible. And what Barcelona don't want to do is to actually apply the uh, FIFA ruling by which you could get Neymar a little bit cheaper because a tribunal will determine the, um, the money to pay to PSG depending on the years of contract, etc. So uh, Barcelona have said we won't do that uh, and it will be a matter of um, swapping players because Barcelona needs to raise now s still 70 million euros 70 million euros for the accounts to be where they want them to be that goes uh, to something that um, uh, has been published in uh, in, a, in sorry in, in sport uh, Hamid Said mentions says um, how much Euros will Barcelona be able to spend this summer, including revenues from sale of the following players: Semedo, Coutinho, Rakitic, Vidal, Umtiti, Toivo, Emerson, Rafinha, Alenia. Basically, as I said, Barcelona have to get uh, have to raise 70 million euros. That could be cash, or it could be in values of players that are coming in swaps that are beneficial economically to Barcelona. And that goes to the story that I retweeted um, uh, from Sport. There is an agreement between Juventus and Barcelona. There is an agreement uh, by which uh, Juventus and Barcelona have agreed a value of players. And now they have to agree which players are the ones that are going to go one way or the other. Some of them, as I'm going to explain now, have already agreed and, that, and Barcelona have advanced uh, those negotiations. Um, but there is a big difference in which has to be the key player that goes from Barcelona to Juventus. So let me explain. Uh, Sports said Semedo um, would be in exchange of uh, Di Siglio, the right back, uh, Pjanic, and 25 million euros. My understanding is that the figures are not exactly that. My understanding as well is that um, two things. One, the player that Juventus wants is Arthur. Arthur is the player that they want. And basically, Barcelona have, have said everybody, apart from De Jong, Ter Stegen, and Messi, they're all for sale. Um, and basically, the the, um, the list of players that Barcelona have shown Juventus, uh, basically, uh, Juventus decided that out of those those lists, they wanted um, they wanted Arthur, basically. Now, um, Barcelona were thinking, how about Semedo? And basically, uh, plus a little bit of money as well, uh, as it's a young player. Uh, one that um, has got room for improvement. Pjanic, of course, is, is 30. The Siglius is 27, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so uh, that's at the point that I understand the negotiations are at. Sport published that it was Semedo, and uh, uh, once they published it, which was part of the negotiations, the kind of conversations that they have in Semedo, Arthur, um, the consequence has been that Barcelona got a little bit upset that the story was out there, not because it was false, but because perhaps um, they're not at the stage of saying that everything is confirmed. There is an agreement between the clubs that a swap can happen and the value of the players that will uh, go one way or the other. On that, 
Barcelona have got an agreement with uh, the Siglio and also with Pjanic uh, in terms of uh, personal personal terms. But Semedo has not agreed anything yet. Um, Jorge Mendes, who is an expert on these things, is his agent. So he, he could make things happen, but he hasn't, Semedo hasn't said yes or no. That's the part of the deal that is not done yet. And Arthur has said he doesn't want to go to Juventus. He wants to stay. So even though there is an agreement between, between the clubs, you have to have everybody. That's why it's so difficult for these things to happen. You have to have everybody uh, saying yes. There's still plenty of time. Uh, interestingly enough, the president of Barcelona not only wants the sporting directors to actually of the club to actually get um, deals that benefit financially Barcelona. They need that because they need those 70 million. Um, but also they want to do it quickly to then focus the attention, perhaps even taking some of the money that's come from that deal from Juventus to use it for Lautaro Martinez. They have an agreement with Lautaro Martinez, Barcelona. And it's just a matter of convincing Inter and swapping players as well, plus a little bit of money. But they need that money to be able to do that deal. So still things up in the air, but Bartomeu would like this to happen qu quickly, even before the beginning of, um, of the last 11 games of La Liga, uh, which, as it looks like, it could be the 12th of June, perhaps the 19th, 12th or 19th. So that's, uh, that's the situation right now. Uh, and as I said, because everybody, that list of players that you put in, yes, they are all for sale or, uh, you know, they're willing to let them go, but it's not going to be easy as, as I've just described. Jim uh, McIntosh is saying uh, a long club for Bale, two years left in contract, but bridges must be burned. Such an exciting player, but his massive wage puts him out of reach of 99% of teams. And that goes back to the story has been doing the rounds that Newcastle are after him. First of all, Newcastle haven't confirmed that uh, they've been sold. That is obviously key. Secondly, um, Bale doesn't have an interest right now in going to Newcastle, even if, uh, if it happens. Um, and then, yes, um, it's true that there will be a limit because of the financial fair play. What's interesting in the last couple of days is that Seferin, the head of UEFA, has said that they will be quite flexible on how financial fair play will, play, will be allowed, uh, which may obviously should benefit uh, Newcastle if the sale goes through. In terms of uh, coaches, we can go back. Well, that's a story, basically. The Bale is not interested in going to Newcastle. But there are other players like Cavani, finishing contract, James, who Real Madrid want to get rid of, that uh, they may be able to convince. that they are not, They're going to have to be clever in the market because they will have money and will be one of the few clubs that will have money, mostly from the Premier League, Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester United, Newcastle. That will be about it. The ones that will spend money. They will have to be clever about how they use that money. And, uh, and that could be a way just to get loan deals, like could get Hammers on loan. Ramadi will be happy to do so if they pay his wages or most of it. Um, Cavani, you get something like that. And then you're talking about serious business. Newcastle been entering the equation of, um, of you know, big deals. Not massive financially for the reasons I've told you, financial fair play. I reckon they can spend 30 million euros, uh, at least I've been told the first three years, with the flexibility of... Of course, see what happens with, with what Seferina said, but also the possibility of bringing money into the club and do it in a, in a clever way, which means that that margin could be improved. But we're talking about not a huge amount, but you can go for a Cavani. The Robinho of Manchester City, when he came to Manchester City from Madrid, it cost 42 million euros cash. And Real Madrid said, all yours. Uh, but Newcastle could enter the, uh, the equation like that, with a Cavani, for instance, if they convince him, if they get him big wages. He's uh, over 34 now, I think, Cavani, 33. Um, and Atletico Madrid would like to convince him, but Newcastle can take advantage of it if, if everything goes through. And staying with Newcastle, uh, just to insist on the idea that right now, right now, Pochettino knows that um, Newcastle uh, won him as his, the number one choice, knows that. I believe, I've been told, there hasn't been contacts, uh, as in exchange of numbers. This is what we will pay you. That's what I believe. That's what I've been told. Um, it will happen, of course, but to convince Pochettino, you have to be serious. You have to go and say, look, this is, has happened already. You can tell him now it may happen. Uh, you can tell him now how the plan could be. But you have to have the club to be able to say, we want you to be the number one. And then, um, and this is my own thinking, this is not uh, 
having asked Pochettino or his entourage, uh, this is my thinking, there'd be a choice. Do you want to wait for a club like, uh, say, PSG, Bayern, Juventus, Manchester United, Manchester City, after Pep Guardiola leaves, do you wait for them uh, and see what happens? Because none of those clubs, and those are the clubs that Pochettino uh, obviously uh, had an eye on, uh, will need a coach straight away, not for a bit. Do you wait for it? Uh, or do you start working with a Newcastle project that you can build on and, uh, and work on? I'm sure they've got full of energies, and I'm sure that... Uh, it will be proposed to them. I'm convinced about that. It is the number one choice for Newcastle. And the, having given that choice, what do you do? And then we'll have to see. Uh, I just uh, I, I really think that having done and spending so much energy on building your prestige, your career uh, with Spurs, um, the next step, the next logical step should be to go a step further, not to go back to the beginning of the Spurs story, a step further. But it depends how nervous tense, anxious to come back. Pochettino is. Everybody will do what he says around him, of course. And uh, it will have to be a matter of, you know, seeing if if it's something that is worthwhile waiting for. And I do believe that if he waits for it, his prestige won't change. Uh, he will still be considered, he's done a magnificent job portrayed in a great book. <laughs> uh, so you've, you've got that um, possibility of waiting, but again, it depends on how anxious he is to return. Uh, as I said, they've got the energy to build again from scratch almost. Obviously, Newcastle is not scratch, but it's a completely different way of thinking about the club. And he will have all the support of everybody and he'll manage to do whatever he wants with the club. That's the attraction. Or you wait. That's, that's the situation. Francisco Castelo Branco says why Nelson Semedo have failed in the Camp Nou. I don't think he particularly has failed, but Barcelona is used to very top fullbacks that make a difference, and he didn't do it often enough. Um, the runs forward weren't uh, as often as you get Jordi Alba or Dani Alves. The defending was good, was decent, but um, again... Uh, to measure a fullback in, in Barcelona, you have to be offensive as well and, and uh, quite clearly create links with Messi, for instance, that work. And that we haven't seen often enough. Hence, sometimes even Sergio Roberto being used in that, in that position. So not a failure, but uh, it seemed like there wasn't much more that he could add to the team. Hence, and the financial situation, why Barcelona are actually uh, trying to sell him. Finally, uh, T Boys K says, with David Silva leaving at the end of the season, will Pep look for a replacement or does he believe in Phil Foden? Also, which league do you think will return the earliest next? Well, uh, I think the Serie A could be delayed. The latest are here, as the protocol hasn't fully been agreed. Once uh, the Premier League agrees the protocol, uh, that could go uh, mid June. And I think La Liga are insisting on the 12th of June because they seem to be wanting um, to please the broadcasters. Uh, and the broadcasters want it to happen on the 12th of June or even the 11th uh, with a Betis Sevilla, Sevilla Betis, uh, to then have games every single game after that. So we'll, we'll have to see, but it looks like it could well be the La Liga at first out of the big ones. Um, and even Lyon is taking, trying to take uh, leg one to um, leg on to court, but uh, I don't think they'll change the position of the government to actually, in, in my eyes, they rushed the decision uh, and now they're going to have to live by it. But they're going to find the same situation in August or September, whenever they wanted to start next, next season. So how they sort that out, it'll be interesting, but it, it looks like they won't come back. And in terms of David Silva, I said last week that the plan of Manchester City is to get two centre-backs, one of which could play, or both even, as uh, centre midfielders, but they are sorted, they think, in the centre midfield. Uh, yes, Silva is going, but Foden will have more time, obviously, he's, uh, he's growing into the, into the role, and they need a full-back. Hence the possibility or the suggestion to Barcelona of swapping Cancelo for Semedo. They trust that uh, Semedo could do a, a bigger job, 
Uh, and uh, uh, that was discussed not only in January, but this summer as well. At the moment, is out of the question as Barcelona is trying to use Semedo in the swap deal for Pjanic at uh, the Siglio uh, from, from Juventus. So that's, um, uh, and that's about it. They, they trust that they have the forwards and the midfielders that they need to compete for everything again, and I'm sure they will. That's it. Uh, there will be more next week, of course. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and everything. Don't forget, pass the word. Uh, as we are growing very fast at the moment. Cheers, bye.